Hey, okay, there we are. Welcome to the premiere episode of the internet's hottest new sensation. <laughs> God, wow, where did that come from? This is a new show, me and KD. This is Kelsey Dion over here, my illustrious guest. We are going to be doing a show called Dungeon Roulette. Welcome, Kelsey. How are you this afternoon or evening? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Evening-ish. I'm, I'm well, and I, I feel disoriented by not knowing what the hell's about to happen. <laughs> it's such an exciting <laughs> feeling, right? <laughs> yes, yes. It's uh, it's generally referred to as the no pants running down the street sensation. So it's uh, <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing. It's knickers only around here. And uh, here's the idea, guys. Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks, guys, for showing up a little bit early. So here's the idea. We've been hanging out every week. We're chit-chatting on Discord and whatnot. And uh, it started occurring to me that I was, like, reaching a sort of a saturation as far as theory goes, as far as talking about theory. I think there's more theory to talk about in the hobby. But... I kind of wanted to switch it up, and instead of theory, I thought, wouldn't it be cooler if somehow we could sort of practice rather than talk theory? Like, what is the practice of our hobby? Now, usually Runehammer is all about game mastering and dungeon mastering, so I was like, what could, what form could practice take? So then I was like trying to do it by myself, and it was insanely awkward, like so many things when done by yourself. <laughs> and so, like, I had this idea of sort of being surprised. And then trying to sort of run with it with your dungeon master sort of persona. And then I thought, you know, I need somebody who is very different from me, but just similar enough to where it won't be <laughs> really awkward. And I thought of none other than Kelsey Dion over here, so, who is the uh, the mastermind of the Arcane Library. You guys can go check that all out on your on your off time. So the idea that we're going to do here to get our dungeon master practice is we have a wheel. Now, Kelsey has written half of the items on this wheel, which I have, I accidentally read one of them while creating the wheel, so I do know one of them. Then I wrote the other half, which she has never seen. We're going to spin the wheel like a great wheel of destiny, and we are going to enter a sort of a free-form, improvisational uh, mess. Trial. <laughs> a, a trial, if you will. <laughs> And then we each have a bell here on our desk. And the bell will be used either as a definitive win. So it'll be like, you won that one. Bing! Or it can be used as like a hook on the stage. Like a let's make a deal kind of thing where I can be like, no, you're terrible. And I can hit my bell. Bing! That means you just, you're awful. Or I can do, I win. <laughs> Which is also <laughs> the same bell. And we will not be keeping score. So no. <laughs> those, <Thank God. laughs> those are the terms of the aforementioned trial. This is Dungeon Roulette. But the idea here underlying, and there's going to be hopefully some silliness. If there's no silliness, then I don't know. You should go. Then we in. failed. Yeah, go watch CNN or something. There's no silliness there either. But there might be some silliness. But the underlying idea here is that one of the fundamental skills that we're all working to get better at as game masters is to be a little bit surprised by something, but to have such a, uh, a sort of encyclopedia of little things to go to that it isn't always necessarily improv so much as just, you know, digging into your little, uh, your own little arcane library, so to speak, your own little Rolodex oh. of silly dungeon master ideas and kind of just being able to whip them out without hesitation and sort of see what happens. To me, this is like one of the fundamental skills of being a good dungeon master because speed, at least for me, is critical in a good game. Like, it's all about like keeping that energy moving. And if there's ever a lull, unless the lull is like suspenseful silence, then it's not good for the game. So in the spirit of that, we are going to spin the wheel and we are going to say random things until someone rings a bell and then we're going to spin the wheel again. And we're going to do this for one excruciating hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the idea here is to entertain, educate, and improve <laughs> the internet. And self-embarrass. <laughs> it's self-embarrass. I think that's, that's another, actually, that's a great point. That's another key skill of a good game master is that you have to be the one most willing to be embarrassed, right? So that your players can feel 
absolutely comfortable to be playing their their I don't know their tabaxi Satanist, right? Exactly. They don't, they don't feel weird anymore. They're just like, well, this this girl, she's I mean, she's insane. So I can just <laughs> role play to my heart's content, and I'll be the most normal person at the table. So exactly. Those are the terms and conditions. And uh, without further ado, let us spin the wheel. Are you ready for this, Kelsey? I think so. Okay, here we go. The first spin on the first episode. <laughs> this could either be the beginning of a beautiful future or the beginning of the end. Here we go. <laughs> We're spinning. We're spinning. And we have the biggest lie about half orcs is... The biggest lie is that their breath doesn't smell because it does 100% of the time. The biggest lie about half orcs is that they are comfortable wearing human shoes. I think you win. What? That was, <laughs> that was easy. Yes. Yours was good. <laughs> the human part of their genetics does not extend all the way to the shape of the foot. <laughs> That's no one what considers that. It's true. <laughs> Okay, so there is a perfect example. Sometimes they're going to be long and drawn out, and sometimes they're going to be quite brief, all right? So here we go. I'm going to spin the wheel again. We're spinning. We're spinning. What's it going to be? Oh, who wins? Goonies or Stranger Things? Oh, man. Ooh. Well, well, Goonies, you got the vintage factor, but I think Stranger Things is mo dope, especially because of the end of season two. Ooh, okay. I I think that the Goonies wins because they had to play music to beat the final boss. Stranger Things wins because it single handedly brought back Synthwave. Damn it. <laughs> Goonies wins because of the truffle shuffle, which is the most iconic dance in nerd history. Stranger Things wins because it single-handedly resurrected D&D &D for the popular audience. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> we got to throw up some credit, okay? You, you got to dig in your heels more hard. You didn't even bring up Sloth. <laughs> oh, poor Sloth. Yeah, you didn't even bring up, like, the Oregon coast. Come on. <laughs> you know, was it filmed there? I should have known. I should have brought up Snickers bars as, uh, you know, buying somebody's loyalty. Yeah, Goonies is also the, one of the only movies to ever be directly translatable into an adventure module. <laughs> That's very true. All that right, is true. All right. Well, they made one, though. Watsy made a Stranger Things. Anyway. You got to hesitate with that. I think you've been ringing your bell comically at home and you've gotten too warmed up on it. All right. I really like ringing it. Okay. Okay. Here we go again. I'm going to I'm going to click the wheel again. I think we're starting to get a little momentum here. The wheel is spinning. The fate of nations hangs in the balance. Um, what does that say? The full name and title <laughs> for an evil necromancer. Full name and title for an evil necromancer. Hmm. I'm going to say Nebuchadnezzar the Bone Lifter. Nice. I'm going to say <laughs> Herzak, the one who rides the dark tide. Gundar of the glowing eye sockets. Idraxus, he who is risen. Beldang the Phylacterer. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar Mehezer Shazarazad. Fun I, I already said Nebuchadnezzar. You're <laughs> out. Get out of here with that. No double Nebuchadnezzars. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> Too many. Get away, get away from my Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, this is the kind of entertainment you're in for, people. This is get deep, ready. deep knowledge. All right. Uh, here we go. Let's go for another one. The wheel is spinning. Children are dangling over lava. <laughs> and it is the best fairy tale of all time is uh, Rumpelstiltskin. Ooh. All right. I think the best one is Rapunzel because I'm because 
I modified it to be reptionzel in first grade, and it was the lizard that let its tongue down. Damn, you got that one. There you go. You're on the board. You're on the board. If we were keeping score. <laughs> Reptile Unzel. Good God. <laughs> I was destined in first grade to be crazy. <laughs> Does never ending story count as a fairy tale? That's a pretty interesting question. I'd have to say yeah. It does. I mean, it's like a classic fairy tale. It's not like it's... a traditional, like, you know, read from a storybook kind of a thing. Hmm. That's true. What's her name? Olga. What's her name at the end? Oh, oh, the prince, the princess. Harriet. Yeah. What does he yell at the end? What's her... I can't remember her name. <laughs> Should be something really, really normal, like Emily. Emily. So, as you can see, you guys, this is very reminiscent of the average session of D and D. All right. Oh yeah. Gertrude. Okay, here we go. The wheel is spinning. James Bond is being lowered into a pool of sharks and you press your ear to the door and hear. Okay, this is more like a DMing one. Hmm. Hmm. You press your door, your you press your ear to the door and hear goblins over, arguing over a game of cards. Good one. I think you press your ear to the door and you hear the clink of call trops and tiny kobold feet scurrying away. Oh, that's nice. You press your ear to the door and hear the distant scream of your missing party member. Ooh. Hmm. You press your ear to the door and you hear nothing else because the door was trapped with a fireball trap and it just blew your face off. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> And then you, after your uh, burning corpse, your burning corpse slumps away. Everyone o notices an ear-shaped depression in the yes. door that is that triggers <laughs> upon ear pressing. Or the only area that isn't covered in smoke is an ear-shaped spot, <laughs> right. like the shadows Spanish. on the wall at Pompeii. <laughs> yep. Floof. <laughs> okay, so that's actually a pretty good one because that shit really does happen when you're playing. Like you're it coming does. around a thing, you're looking at some map or your notes or some gr garbage and you're like moving into a part of the map where you have no idea what's supposed to happen. And you're like, uh, actually, uh, Caltrops and Kobolds running away is pretty good because it's just bait. That's a Yeah, good saying one. nothing is like not an option to that question. In my <laughs> you, you hear the mimic chewing your ear. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so I do have my eye on the comments section over there, you guys. Um, if a comment just owns us both, I think that could also earn a, a bell ring. Absolutely. Okay, here we go. I'm spinning the wheel again. Okay, we're curing world hunger right now. Here we go. Uh, oh, that one's small. It says, the weirdest D&D &D monster in a core book. Ooh. Okay, so no, uh, no weird stuff like Volos or anything. It's got to be... Monster Manual, DMG, PHB type core books, right? So weirdest, weirdest monster. Yeah. Mm. Um. Yeah. I always thought that the Grell, like the flying brain with a beak. I thought yeah, that at was least it's pretty weird, weird looking. I yes. have to go. Weird would be Doppelganger, that skinny zombie guy that winds up looking like one of your party members. That one is creepy. Um, that is weird. Neither one of those are winners, though. We got to keep going. Abeleth, like a big mucusy fish with intelligence. Hmm. <laughs> That's somewhat. Well, I don't know. Core books makes it really hard. Yeah. All the, all the weird ones are in the other in the other books. Uh, weirdest monster in the core book. God, I just want to go get my sure. monster manual. I guess that would be against the rules. Ooh. Um, what about mm. Crench? Do you remember Crenshaw beasts? Crenshaw beasts. <laughs> yeah, they were like they were like dogs with like faces that were flipped inside out, and they had their like nasal passages running down the front. I thought they were just disgustingly cool. Ooh, mind rats! Mind rats! Oh, mind rats! They're the rats with the exposed brain, and they hit you with psionic attacks. Ooh, 
I think our trend is exposed innards so far. I, st- I can't even give myself a bell on that. Um, the shit. weirdest. The core book thing is stumping me because I keep on thinking of things from like uh, Mordenkainen's and stuff. Yeah, that's where they got um, really crazy. The core book's tough. And like, I don't think gibbering mouther or anything is weird because that's pulled straight from like Conan and HP Lovecraft. So that's not altogether unique, you know? Plus it's not that weird. Yeah, it's just like, there's always like some slobbering thing with a bunch of mouths and eyes. Like it's not that strange. Yeah, that's in everything. Uh, that's so normal. Is it, let me see. Is there anybody? There's also like the uh, the children of Caius, but I think that's in Volo's. That's the person oh. that's made of maggots, and they jump on you and dig into your skin. Yes, <laughs> I remember rats. that. That's what they're called, cranium rats. <laughs> that was from like that the, the oh, Pathfinder. We got a comment winner, the Flumpf. The oh, flump. <laughs> yes. oh, we just got dominated. Oh, now this flump. is this is a beautiful moment because we just got owned. The Flumpf is a super winner. So as far as DM knowledge goes, I think we just both got owned. So one we point did. to the to the comment section. The the uh, the um, the lumpy heads are on the board. All right, we're we're hitting the we're hitting the wheel again. That was a tough one, surprisingly. Yeah. I'm not good at trivia. Here we go. Here we go. The sun is overheating. The moon is drawing you closer to the earth. You see a chamber ahead. Dot dot dot. Okay, here's another one of these like real life DM ones. You see a chamber ahead. And hmm. And it you sees s- you too. Oh, ooh, that's nice. I don't want to ring it. It's too soon, but it's too good. <laughs> Thanks. You see a chamber ahead and it sees you too. And then you could easily say, what will you do? That's that would brilliant. be fun. I love that one. <laughs> I was going to say the far side of the room is rotating past the near side. I like that too. So it'd be that's like, a big kinda, problem. Man, that, I'm still tripping on that flump. I just feel served. <laughs> I know. We have, I'm like glad to lose to flump, though. I'm honored to lose to flump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a good outlook on it. There you go. There, another core dungeon mastering skill, optimism. Don't look back on your, your, uh, your errors with such self-loathing like I do. Spinning the wheel. <laughs> We're donating to um, World Peacekeeping Forces and... Oh, this is yours. By Crom, it's a blank, blank, or dot, dot, dot. By Crom, it's a dot, dot, dot. It's a self-aware weasel. By Crom, it's a male bartender. (laughs) (laughs) And indeed. (laughs) Hey, that was pretty good. (laughs) That was good. This actually came up on Monday. We were drinking beer and there was uh, like somebody couldn't make their shift and this guy was subbing for her and we were just like flabbergasted with how weird it was. And we were saying Conan would have just killed him on on sight. (laughs) And I don't mean that in like any kind of genderist kind of way. I'm just saying like men make make strange um, barmaids. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, especially in a and d world. I I just... Even me, I'm like the bar wench comes up to you. And he would be wearing the same outfit as a bar wench. Of, of course. course. So that yes. could add to the both excitement and oddity. All right. Here we go. We're going to spin the wheel again. I'm running out of analogies for spinning the wheel. <laughs> we're 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 curing glaucoma. Uh here's another small font. Explain the legend of the diamond-eyed tiger. Mm. So this sounds like backstory primer for a, a player who just made an int roll. Yes. Explain the legend of the diamond-eyed tiger. Hmm. The diamond-eyed tiger was the fiercest open hand boxer. And his hands were so fast and hard that he was the diamond-eyed <laughs> tiger. That kind of sucks, but I'm going to keep going. It's bad. <laughs> um, folks say that if the diamonds can ever be replaced to those great stone eye sockets, that the door will open to Shambhala. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. Come on. You can dig deeper than that. Keep going. 
I think that the diamond-eyed tiger is the creature that stalks those who steal in the night, and its eyes are glittering with the gems thieved from the wealthy merchants. So it could be a dude, it could be a dungeon, it could be a monster. The diamond-eyed tiger is the most notorious tavern in Waterdeep. Ooh. <laughs> You're owning this one. I think the diamond-eyed tiger is the cavern that Aladdin flew into and almost didn't fly out of. <laughs> the <laughs> the diamond-eyed tiger is a specific species of black lotus root, and if one chews it for two days, you will see the mountains of Shebalba. Shebalba. I've got nothing on this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was hard fought. That was hard fought. I earned that. You own yeah. that one. Matt's got a good one on the comments, too. He says it's the deadliest form of martial arts. I like that, too. I like it's, that. It's like where you're like, yeah. All right. You can spin you can in the wheel again. Your... Everybody is just watching this stream right now thinking, I'm going to be such a great dungeon master after enduring this awkward situation. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I want okay. everyone to know that they're just a better dungeon master than me right now. It's, mm. you just are. <laughs> We're all better than each other. It's just one yes. huge circle of betterness. Exactly. Um, okay, here we go. A diadem. Now, okay, now the guys in the comments and the ladies, everyone for that matter, in the comments is starting to get in on the fun. So they're just like starting to go crazy. <laughs> the diamond eyed tiger is worth about 3,000 gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we go. We're spinning the wheel. Hey, yo. We're cleaning the plastic out of the oceans. And. Ba -doop. Best way to kill an NPC. Boy, this is meat and potato stuff right here. I'm going to just jump right out of the beginning here and say unexpected avalanche. It just happens and they're just squashed right in front of everybody for no good reason. That's like a nicer form of rocks fall. Everyone dies. Mm hmm. But I think tumble. the best way, the best way to kill an NPC. Gosh, kill them with kindness. Ooh, not bad. They just, they just wind up leaving because everybody's just too nice to them. Just overpay them for their services and then they run into the danger for you. That's killing the them with kindness. The best way to kill an NPC is a player character rolling a one, shooting them in the back of the head with a crossbow bolt. Ooh, especially if they're a beloved NPC. That's a good <laughs> hey. one. Yes, okay. The um best way to kill an NPC. Hmm. Have the assassin get them first just to cause fear. And then you know the assassin's coming the next night for you. Mm -hmm. Like when Rambo like plot element. Like the eyes in the mud and he's like Bleh. Yeah. All those guys were NPCs in Rambo. Um, I can say the, the best way to kill an NPC is as soon as possible. Hey! hey. <laughs> there we go. Now you're in the spirit of it. Okay. <laughs> we were just talking about this, weren't we? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> okay. Boy, I can just, I can feel the, the practice element. I keep trying to reinforce the theme because it's so flimsy. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is Coming up with weird answers to unexpected things. <laughs> Here we go. We're spinning the wheel. We're emailing our grandma right now. Here we go. Yes. Oh, another small font one. What makes this magic sword cooler than any other? What makes this magic sword cooler than any other magic sword? It's very cold because it's a frost brand sword. <sighs> Quite cool. That's so weak. <laughs> The reflection in the blade of this sword shows you in your ultimate form. Nice, nice. I think this sword communicates to you telepathically in the voice of your mother. Ah, oh, well, I guess that could be good though, too. I guess that's soothe. not cool, that's just scary. It would be like, do you want a snack? I don't Swing know why the I went into- Swing the sword harder, son. Why did I go into leprechaun mode for that? That was so strange. <laughs> That's how uh, mom sounds. You're going to let yourself die today? Is... 
Hey, you better have a saltine with that soda or you'll get a sore tummy. Uh, this sword is cooler than any other magic sword because it's actually three swords. Uh, nice. With the other two blades hidden within when the first breaks. Ooh. Right. Then it upgrades itself. Yeah, I it's like, it's like, nice. That's like manga level. This sword is a cool sword, the coolest sword, because it was the sword wielded by Nebuchadnezzar von Hesemzezeranon <laughs> von Xerxes. Yeah. Well, he can he can only wield the sword because of the sidebar in the second edition rules toolkit. Cyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the coolest. This is cooler than any other magic sword because uh, it only kills elves. Oh. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we needed that sword. <laughs> I need that sword in my life. <laughs> yep, to kill Nebuchadnezzar Xerxes and Merezazan. Someone actually wrote his full name, and whoever that was, I wish I could shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that is, I was thinking of, um, the movie is called The Sword and the Sorceress, and that's when he has the three blades that shoot off like rockets. Absolutely oh, cool. ridiculous. Okay, here we go again. We're spinning the wheel, and we are learning origami. Here we go. God, that's exciting. Invent a new creature. Can you invent a new creature on the spot? Yes. I think the new creature is a small turtle with wings mm -hmm. that speaks whatever language it last heard fluently. Only the last language it heard, though. Hmm. So it just flies by like, hola, amigo. Yeah, it's like a little hummingbird, but it's a turtle. <laughs> and it has anymore. like homicidal instincts. Hmm. <laughs> hola. <laughs> hola, amigos. <laughs> La tortuga. <laughs> um, my monster will be a... It will be a gelatinous mass which in appearance is identical to fresh spring water, but in contact is highly acidic and has predatory intelligence. So if we could call it, I'm going to call it a, a fountain slime. Nice. That so, could be so useful. It, it lives in a little fairy fountain down in the dungeon, but it's actually highly concentrated intelligent acid. <laughs> nice. And then, like, one of the little turtles flies by and is like, do not drink that, my friend, and then flies away. <laughs> but he says it in Swedish, so everybody's just like, don't mind him. <laughs> <laughs> Languages matter in this game. They matter. <laughs> like, what world are we in right now? <laughs> I would like to invent a, a Zamoraz. It's the invert of a Remoraz, so it actually is a cold creature that lives in magma so it's the exact Ooh. opposite of a remoraz so it it lives in a lava environment but it uses cold damage and it's immune to heat and that's why it likes to it actually likes to live in magma because it slightly warms it that's cool so, so it's a it's like, like the cousin that. of the remoraz it's like red and looks like a centipede and shit that's awesome that's actually a really cool idea someone someone's got to make that well, you're not here to tell me it's cool. You're here to compete. That's right. I think <laughs> I think it would be really cool to have a gigantic manta ray that was electrical in nature so that any attempt to interact with it was risky, but you could ride it if you knew where to sit on its body. There was like a, a grounding point? Yes. Hmm. Not bad. It's like not bad. The size of a room. That'd be cool. And then, but then it has like um, Captain Nemo, the uh, the Nautilus had that ability where it would like zzz, it would zap the water. I Ooh. think actually in fifth edition, the Kraken can do that too. It can, it can. Elect it can electrocute the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a right. manta ray that's related to the Kraken. It's a Kraken ray. Kraken ray. Okay, it's I, razor I, Kraken. I like that. I don't know if we're quite there yet. I would like to. I would like to do a. I want to call it a. A bonsaikonid. 
And the Banzai Kanud is a, a suicide bomb myconid mushroom man. Oh, so that's cool. He's, he's yelling Banzai Kanud as he runs toward you and he just goes. And so then you see like there's a whole bunch of them sprinting at you. And you realize their their commitment to kill you <laughs> is, <laughs> is extreme. <laughs> hey, <laughs> bonsai canids. That's actually All right. awesome. <laughs> All right. Puddle ooze. Apparently, my idea is already taken by an, ab it's called an abolin. I'm an a ballin', <laughs> so I'm taking my time and my right. Okay. Whew. All right, guys. I hope is that everyone is feeling enriched. Here we go again. This is mind expanding. All right. We're paying off our college fund with this one. Here we go. <laughs> right, I guess student debt is what it's called. The king announces your heroism. Okay. So this is going to be like a role playing one here. So when the king announces how awesome your player characters are, what does the king say? You have gone to distant lands at my request to recover the coolest sword imaginable that splits into three and slays my two evil brothers who wish to usurp me. And you are now my loyal knights and the retainers of my guard. Congratulations and welcome to your career. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> you, almost, you almost lost it at the end. Just forget the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, way to stick with it. DM skills. Your Hail my subjects. Behold the invincible guardians of Ulatek. That, that's it. I also put the crowd in. Nice. <laughs> this I is a tough it. one. We got to keep going. Don't you ring that bell. Come on. All right. I'm not going to ring the bell. Role play that king. My glorious bards of the realm who have shredded the bard championship and brought honor to their people. I award you these golden lyres and command you to make music under my protection for the remainder of your days. Congratulations. And I also have more heroes to announce. The audience members who endured the aforementioned bards. May they, <laughs> may they drink forever in my hall. And further, I wish to congratulate this dwarf who slayed the last living elf. We owe you our thanks. And to Herman, the royal gardener who has pruned the hedges with a precision heretofore undreamed of. <laughs> oh, um, who else is it? Who else is left to congratulate in this audience? <laughs> did we forget? Did yes, yes. Did we forget? Oh, Mildred, Mildred, you. You swept the floors of my room with a dedication unseen in this realm for 30 years. You have one more left. And I know you can do it, Mildred. Congratulations. I, we are so grateful uh -huh. for your contribution. You're out. <laughs> You're out. You lost it. <laughs> oh, and did I also mention the uh, taxes which were performed by the other? I'm uh, feeling quite warm at this time. I, I'll, I'll tell you, that is a very real moment. I don't know about it is for you guys or for you, Kelsey, but that is some real shit when you're playing and you're DMing and you find yourself in some kind of rabbit hole of NPC dialogue. Oh, the best is when your NPCs are now talking to each other while the characters watch. <laughs> oh, yeah, That's that a is, tough one. That is horrendous. How do you dig Hello, out of that? I don't today? know. Oh, I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing quite well. And everybody's just sitting through it like, why am I He's here? You have to follow the first rule, which is kill them as quickly as possible. Yes. So far, I'd say that is the biggest axiom to come out of the of the stream so far. Mm -hmm. All right. I can feel my... Actually, I do think that the theory of uh, of like this feeling like practice is being, being borne out. I mean, it's, this is not that easy to do. I don't know if this is entertaining no. to anybody. That's a little bit of a second question, but this is not that easy. <laughs> It's not easy. I think it's, I would have fun watching someone get just to the end in the dive bomb like I like to do. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the wheel is spinning. We're finishing our homework. <clears throat> and we have, describe an arrow killing a skeleton. 
describe an arrow as it kills a skeleton. This is something you do like every damn session. It is. Hmm, let's think of a good one. I think the arrow flies through the rib cage of the skeleton and then rattles around and breaks its vertebrae, causing it to crumble. <laughs> Pinball. Uh, you you pierce the air the uh, you pierce the skeleton's eye socket and drive it up against the wall. The body falls away from the neck, but the skull remains. Yes. You with an expert shot blast its head off, knocking it into another skeleton, causing both of them to fall to pieces. <laughs> uh, the skeleton catches your arrow, but you fired it with such force. It, lo it looks as if it's scooping its own eye out with a spoon. What? I'm, no, I'm <laughs> out, I'm out, I'm out. I, I freaking lost it. It's okay though. <laughs> I thought Got catching right it was cool, and then I realized, no, that's like you didn't shoot it. Like, I totally fucked up on that one. <laughs> Just got to roll with it, as we all do, at the table. <laughs> Whew, okay, all right. Man, oh, man, I tell you what. <laughs> the the Wernicke's area of my brain over here, which is, you know, creates association between images and words, is starting to get a little warm. Here we go. We're spinning the wheel. We're tying our shoes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Okay, best boss battle song of all time. So you're you're in your session. It's like two years into this shit. You're finally facing down this vampire you've been talking about all this time. You've got some background music going for your group. What is it? Dang, I got. I'm gonna give us a legitimate answer to this. I don't know if anyone has heard this, but the Hyper Light Drifter soundtrack. Yeah. For the video game. Hell Some of yeah. the best boss music, I'm telling you. Damn, that's pretty good. I would have to say The Beautiful People by Marilyn Manson. <laughs> Ooh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> -na 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 -na. And namely, like your players. They're the beautiful people. I, I they are. What about Let the Bodies at the Floor? <laughs> <laughs> so intense. <laughs> but okay, good, with the, with the right down. group, I can see it. Um, how about... Um, if I delay too long, I lose. Uh, Bittersweet Symphony. Bah! There's too many options. Sandstorm. Sandstorm. <laughs> Sandstorm by Darud. There we go. I pulled it out. Okay. Whew. We'll take it. We'll take it. We should let that one lie, I think. <laughs> really, that's just the end of everything. That's the end of a night at the bar. That's the end of a round of golf. So when the that, credits roll, it's good for everything. Uh, oh, yeah. Immigrant Song is a good one. Oh, that is. Uh, any of the Final Fantasy type stuff. Yes. Everybody's got something to say on this one. Final Countdown. Man Eater by Hall & Oates. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what about, is there like, but you is don't there a Beyonce listen. song we can shoehorn in here? I think there is. I just don't know what it is. You know, the titles like, to her songs are fantastic, but there's just like, there's never a break that satisfies me in the Beyonce songs. I, I don't no. know why. Maybe like put a ring on it could have been one. Like no, the bad guy had his chance. That's so messed up. <laughs> you can't listen to that during D&D. &D. That's so weird. Okay, here we go. We're hitting the bell. We're hitting the, it's not a bell. It's a freaking wheel. Here we go. There it is. It's a spinning. <laughs> Okay, my RPG budget goes to, so you're spending money every month on RPG crap. Obviously, it goes to Runehammer. Oh, God. <laughs> I, would ring, I would ring the bell, but it's too soon. Well, my budget goes to the Arcane Library. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got you there. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> I had to get those bad ones out of the way first this time. <laughs> I'm going to have to say aborted Lego projects. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mine goes to good coffee, which is the actual ingredient for DMing well, in my opinion. That's a good one. That's a good mm -hmm. one. Um, mine goes to uh, core books I never play. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's a mine, pretty good one. Mine goes to six digital maps, only one of which I actually use. 
Mine go to Patreon pages I never check back on. Nice. Um, mine goes to snacks. <laughs> Something goes to. <laughs> That's lame, bad. <laughs> lame, lame, lame. For one it thing, goes snacks to are cheap. Takis. <laughs> takis. Uh, so much takis. <laughs> and and my Spotify subscription, so I can listen to Man Eater during the boss fight. There you go. <laughs> All right. You know, mine usually goes to the evening beer fund. I, almost everyone had to mention alcohol. Alcohol is a central part of Dungeons and Dragons. That's why it's fun for kids. <laughs> that's, that's a little that's a little D and D humor there, guys. Please, please let's let's uh, hit the wheel and keep moving. Student loans, yeah, that's a pretty good one. All right, here we go. We're fixing our genes. We've got what makes elves so damn sadistic. Why are elves always so mean? It's because when stuff gets hard, they flee Middle Earth off to their la-la land and they don't take part. Mm-hmm. They're grumpy. Uh, it's because they got stuck running the Underdark. Ooh. Ooh. It's because the only thing they've eaten for years is Lembus bread. It's because the commute in tree cities is super annoying. <laughs> It's because there's only so many ways they can describe their wine before they run out of descriptions. It's because they have three times the earwax of a human. Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Elves. What was the original question? <laughs> oh, oh I, I almost crushed my bell with my force. There we go. It's why are they so Is it why we hate elves? You can't forget the question. It's specific to sadism. <laughs> I thought you were going to say because they're so old, no one listens to their music anymore. <laughs> oh. For some reason, that was just digging a hole in my brain. It was getting very uh, distracting. This... It's because they have all the teeth and no toothbrush. That's an interesting one. Whoa. Do they? Do they in have my world, they're cannibals. Normal? Everybody's got something to say on elves. <laughs> Elves are so hated because Aww. they're because they're not dwarves. That's a really good one. Very good that one. Is. That is, that was uh, Chuck Lemons over there in the comments. Brilliant. Good All one. right, we got a few more spins here. We've, uh, we've got about twenty minutes left in this pulse pounding practice exercise. We've got seventy some viewers, and here we go. Ow. Oh, it's going to stop. Uh, we're opening the Hadron Collider. Uh, you walk into an empty room and see. So we got another one of these room ones. Apparently both of me and you had that on our brain. Ah. You walk into an empty room and see. Hmm. Hmm. Several creatures beginning to materialize. Because it has to start empty, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, strange creatures begin to materialize. That'll, that'll be my first one. You have to bring in a threat. You see a portcullis slam over the door and acid start to spit from tiny hidden crevices in the wall. Hmm. You, you walk into an empty room and see that your party members, your friends, have vanished. Ooh. Hmm. Someone said, and see a sadistic elf. <laughs> <laughs> the most terrifying answer of all goes to the audience. I think um, I might have to I might have to give it to Mappernomicon on this one. He says, You you walk into an empty room and see another empty room. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so That's begins great. Inception. <laughs> yep. Whoa! So many empty rooms. I must be in Barrow Maze. Ha <laughs> ha. Got you again, Greg. Got you again. Thank you. Oh, I got a bonus bell on that one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. A glimpse of your fellow. Oh, yikes. Okay, here we go. We're ringing the, we're ringing the wheel again. That's just what I'm going to start saying. I... Ding the wheel. Ding the wheel. Here we go. She's going to come to a stop. 
another tiny font. This one casts fireball. Wait, this one? Why did I even say that? The wizard casts fireball into the room, and what happens? The rogue is seventh level, so he stands still and takes no damage. Nice. Oh, he's already in there. The wizard casts a fireball into the room. And despite destroying nothing, he very conveniently lights all four torches. Ooh! <laughs> Without blowing them to bits. <laughs> <laughs> it was tightly controlled fireball. Very good. <laughs> He must specialize. Um, the wizard casts fireball into the room, hits the back wall, not knowing it's the Tarasque's outer hide, and it bounces right back at him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This this room has a wall that's a Tarasque? Holy Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess if it's like a Tarasque docking station, that could, act, that could totally be something. Yeah, it just fell uh, asleep right there. Ooh, the, the wizard casts a fireball into the room and the fireball uh, how do I even describe this this is the practice element the doorway to the room is actually a two way portal and the fireball emerges back into his face <laughs> dumb <Good>. trap <laughs> that's a good trap that's a great trap it's like a mirror portal or something Stock it with little mooks and then wait for the fireball. And then it's just a mirror that, that reflects magic. Actually, yeah, then maybe that isn't so bad. It's a good trap. I think right, the keep... fire the wizard casts the fireball into the room and it appears to expand in an explosion and then shrinks down to the size of a tennis ball and disappears inside the anti magic zone. I love it that is... one. Oh boy, that's good. The wizard casts a fireball into the room and the room breaks away into a larger cavernous space where it tumbles down into darkness. I like that one. I like that one. What does the audience say? I, <laughs> I got a look. They're saying counterspell. No. And one of them says it scores a basket for the home team. <laughs> <laughs> For the Bearcats. Um, it fizzles out, just like his other bad ideas. <laughs> That's really good. Okay, there we go. I have to give that one, yeah. Dumb old wizard. Every time we come up on these cool rooms, you always do something dumb. <laughs> High intelligence, low wisdom. I wish you would have canceled and not come tonight. <laughs> Ouch, boy, that, that hurts, huh? Ooh. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, everybody. This is Dungeon Roulette with your hosts, Ingrid Bernal and Kelsey Dion. So what do you think, Kelsey? Let's we're, we're coming here. We've got 15 minutes remaining. What do you think about this idea before we dare to open the opinion floor up to the comments? What do you, is this something that works? Is this a good thing to do like every other week? Or is this just complete insanity? What's your, what's your verdict? To me, having just having come up with ideas, and I'm sure everyone watching was coming up with their own too. It feels like very good practice because when you're on the spot, that's I think this is the thing dungeon masters fear the most is being put on the spot and then coming up with an idea and then looking dumb or not being able to roll with it. Mm -hmm. And so practicing rolling with whatever comes out of your mouth, whether it's good or bad, is actually a really, really good skill. Cool. Possibly the best skill for a DM. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I know that normally what we do is sit and we'll talk about like our ideas for how to run encounters and how to do a lot of that other stuff. But, uh, for me, it is fun to put myself on the spot a little more. Like when I'm talking theory, I'm never on the spot. I'm kind of like in the professor's chair and I'm, but I'm actually quite warm doing this. So if I'm warm, that means it's not that easy. Yeah. So, I've, there's some, you can't see it, but I'm totally covered in sweat right now. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no it really it's it's i'm luckily, not i'm not but... luckily zoom luckily zoom puts like sort of a, a good looking filter on all of its camera work i don't know how they do that it's amazing thank goodness okay. it's the anti-sweat filter it is yes okay so yeah it looks like there's a lot of great feedback in the comments thank you guys we have a few we're going into the lightning round Ooh. 
I just made this up. In the lightning round, you only get one answer and we'll determine the winner. Good. No more of this meandering gobbledygook. All right, here we go. Lightning round is going to be five spins of the wheel. And we're gonna we're gonna choose a an erstwhile winner. I actually don't know what erstwhile means. <laughs> I like it. Let's just use it. It it's, means make us, it it's we... like it's like ostensibly. Like people say it and they're not sure what the hell it actually freaking means. <laughs> All right. Here we go for the lightning round. Round uh, spin one. God, the suspense. Everything is hanging on this. <laughs> if flowers could talk, they would say. Stop cutting us. If flowers could talk, they would say, smell me. <laughs> All right. V viewers who won that one. First comment gets the gets the verdict. <laughs> because they're too close to call. Yours Come was more on. optimistic than mine. <laughs> Come on. Somebody said with all seriousness. Oh, is that, is that what erstwhile means? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> with all seriousness. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I'm going to give that one to you. Here we go. Round two. Uh, the portal opens. Describe the terror within. A gathering of elves at a wine tasting. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, we're going there, huh? Okay. Dwarves attempting to cook tacos. <laughs> so is which is the worse? Terror. Which is worse, audience? Is it elves drinking wine together or dwarves eating tacos together? It's That's actually another really close one. That is. I kind of want to um, give this to you because yours was off the beaten path. <laughs> what is Starbucks? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> you see a Starbucks. Okay. It's, <laughs> you see Starbucks. <laughs> Dear God, no. They're in my fantasy world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna give that one to to uh, the to the uh, the viewers. I think they got that one with Starbucks. So that's uh, Cairo six. You took that one. Here we go for spin number three in the lightning round. Oh boy, glasses fogging up. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Dwarf character name battle. Give me your best dwarf character name. Thunder and Foghammer. Mm, straight faced. Yes. Thundering <laughs> fog hammer. Hmm. I'm going to have to say. Uh, uh, pining fish bat toe. No. Pining no, fish. Fuck. I know his first name is pining. And his last name is something like Fisherman's Bat-like Toes or something. I got all fucked up. No, That's you can't say Hanker and Fernail. That's cheating. So is saying Firk and Fernail. That's also cheating. Firk and Fernail. <laughs> Dwarfy McDwarf face. I knew that was going to come up. Grun Gindlestone. Kalen Boulderbelly. Ulrich Stubson. Okay, that one wins. Hey, that's a good one. Ulrich, Ulrich Stubson. Stubson. That is fantastic. I, God, like I want to use that one. Cry at lore. Okay, we've got two for the viewers and one each. Oh, no, wait. I don't have one yet. Yes, you this got tacos. Oh, I got tacos. No, Starbucks won that one. Oh. Yeah, we got two for the viewers and you've got one. This is spin number four. Here we go. Oh. Ulrich Stubson. Ulrich Stubson. Brilliant. It's good. Okay. Places, oozes, slimes, and jellies tend to appear places oozes slimes and jellies tend to appear in the latrines of the goblin warrens in the boots of Ulrich Stubson <laughs> <laughs> 
and he doesn't care. He still wears them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's going to be hard for anybody to beat this one. I'm feeling strong on this one. I think you earned that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got this one. I got this one. All right, cool. So that's one each and two for the commenters. So we are going to Smucker's Jars. That was one of the uh, Ooh. Smucker's Jars. I think actually Ulrich Stubson might just be like the, the on the highlight reel of the whole stream. Here we go for spin number five. Ogre armpits. Ooh. Gotta stay out of there. You just warped to an unknown planet. Describe it. Well, this is this is very real DM type stuff here, too. This totally this happens, happens constantly. This happens constantly, yeah. Like, uh oh, we're in my new setting and I forgot to even really write down what it looks like. You just warped to an unknown planet. Describe it. Hmm. Hmm. I think the unknown planet I would describe is two planets that have pulled themselves toward each other in a gravitational crush. And you see that there's a huge halo of asteroid belt where they're touching and one is lush and beautiful and the other is a gaseous icy wasteland. Ooh, I like that ending. Okay, you warped to an unknown planet. You find that all that remains of this world is a blob of amorphous atmosphere clinging to a colossal mass of machines. Yeah. That's I'll, cool. I'll, I'll, yours is though is, is like gives me a little more space to see some kind of story unfolding though. I like that that duality. Um, but yours could point. be like the space, the ultimate space Hulk. Yeah, it's just kind of one tone though. It only has one one piece. I'm, I like the binary one so far. Okay, let me watch the comments here for a second. It's small. That's when somebody's answer. You can walk <laughs> around it in a matter of minutes. It's like a cheese omelet. Um, the whole planet is a gelatinous cube. Ooh. A, a twilight moon is shining. Wait, that's no moon. No Star Wars references will be tolerated <laughs> on this stream. You see before a vast landscape, high twist expires brown of substance. And then a Starbucks. Nope. There's there's a no repeat rule. I think I think you might have got that one. So we have a tie round. Tie round. We've got two for KD and we've got two for the commenters. Here comes the final spin. Oh, and how perfect is 420. Here we go. Ooh. Shabadoo, shabadee. Global equality. All right. Roll uh, roll up new characters. My go-to is Kelsey, you're rolling up new characters and you don't have that much time. What's your what's your standby concept? My standby concept is a halfling arcane trickster. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's like it's a good synergy build, that's for sure. Yeah, and they're uh, always kind of they can be serious and funny and useful and useless. And you clearly have the facial expressions down pat. <laughs> You're like, I might be a halfling illusionist. Oh. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm feeling that. I'm always happy to have halflings in any group. For some reason, they're just cool. Uh, goblin alchemist. Uh, eh, I don't know. I, I guess that's a good match because you get the bomb making. And you get the yes. bomb making with the goblin. That's a pretty good one. That's another the kind goggles. of like dwarven bard. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you just get out of here with that. Get out of here with that. Shame. Um, <laughs> Jack of all trades bard, average out stats, necromancy wizard, who thinks he's healing people when he's animating them. Uh, goblin wild sorcerer, obsessed with books they can't read. That's your go-to? That's extremely specific. Dwarf or turtle. Pretty cool. Dwarven Paladin. Now that is a rock solid answer. It's not it's gaggy. That is a synergy build that's gonna kick ass. So, whew. Uh, I guess I'm. It looks like I've changed from participant to judge on this one. And I <laughs> well, feel what like did you, I'm, What is yours? My go-to is uh, under-equipped Dwarven Fighter. Good one. 
So always That's using the, classic. the yeah the dwarf fighter synergy, but then foregoing almost all the equipment and giving him like a fishing pole and a blanket, and then nice. just sort of see what happens. Um, we got more coming up here, but now you guys are just telling me two word combos. That's not going to cut it. Uh, orc barbarian. That's pretty good, but can be a little gimmicky. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys got to be careful. You might be handing it to Kelsey here. It's either, <laughs> it's either that or Dwarf Paladin. I That is a really solid one. I'm like I always like happy. I like Dwarf Paladin. I'm happy to play with a Dwarf Paladin at all times because yeah. it's the only Paladin that's a little bit harder to make fun of. Yeah, and it's it's not totally what you would expect for a Dwarf. Like normally you would expect a fighter, but a Paladin is... A more purposeful dwarf. Yeah, and they're short enough where they don't get like the paladin ego syndrome where it's like totally out of control. Like you do yeah. with the human paladin. And then the elf paladin is just a freaking nightmare. Like that's everyone's just, like, shut up. Yeah. Yeah, shut up. Yeah, don't tell me how to live. This is only my third cup of coffee. Jeez. Making me feel bad. I see you drinking it too. <laughs> <laughs> Always back to the okay. okay. Somehow dwarf paladin has won the go-to character creation staple contest. And that was the lightning round. So uh, I think the the viewers win some kind of booby prize on this one. They they win the, uh, well, the prize oh, no is be, prize. being a better dungeon master. <laughs> 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 Good God, that's so corny. Okay, guys. Now open a 401k. Just kidding. Now open up your 401k and get out there and clean that plastic out of that dang old ocean. All right, guys, that is Dungeon Roulette for today. We are not here to get all heavy and talk about D&D theory and push our products and do the usual. The idea was just to get out, have a good time, and practice these these dungeon mastering muscles, the muscles. And we'll be back in two weeks to do it again. Remember to breathe in the space, in the time between now and then. You know, I know the suspense is going to be crazy, but remember to you know, folk, a little self care and whatnot. Kelsey, thank you for enduring this incredibly awkward and excruciating experience. What did you think? Thank you. I am so glad I got to endure this with you. It was a fun one. It was a fun one. Okay. Well, we're, I I, I love it. I love doing this kind of stuff. I I get a real hoot out of it. So maybe one of these days, if I can convince Kelsey to imbibe in an alcoholic beverage, we'll push the show a little further, but until then it's going to be Starbucks all the way. Thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> and uh, we'll look forward to seeing all three zillion of you on the next episode of Dungeon Roulette. We're out of here. See you guys. Thanks, guys.